Good afternoon. So we're moving swiftly along on our vegetable, fruit, eggs, and farinaceous. Um, so we just done our risotto. Uh, we're using uh, the rice, and we've explained the various different grains of rice. Now again, the term farinaceous. Let's just refresh on it. It means to be made with rice or with flour or starch. Okay. Um, so the next thing we're going to make is we're going to make a very simple recipe of a pasta dough. Now pasta again. A very big staple in Australia, um, namely because of the large um, Italian population that we have. At one point in Paris, I think the population of Italy, people holding Italian passports was 37%, so very high. Um, but also then you've got some Asian egg noodles, which is very, very similar um, preparation as, as rice noodles. So just to, or as pasta, but just understanding the process makes a big difference. Now again, a lot of people will have their Nana's recipe all the way up to commercial recipes. We've got a machine here at TAFE which, uh, which actually makes the dough and, and, and extrudes it out and forms, forms it in the, in the one process. But that recipe will be adapted to be slightly different. What we're doing today is a very basic handmade recipe. So because you guys are doing it from home, uh, some people may have equipment and some people may not. So we're going to keep it as basic as we can. All right. So all you need is a bowl, a flour sieve, and some just, you know, you can have these in cups or whatever that suits you at home, okay? Now the most important thing with pasta is that we use the correct flour, okay? We use a zero, zero flour, all right? Which is a very, very fine flour, okay? Because again, it's the gluten um, that we're after, okay? To get that nice stretch on the pasta, all right? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sieve this. If you have your recipes there, so I need to give you the quantities. All right, very simple, sieve it. Now, so I've got olive oil and some water and two eggs, okay? Now these eggs have been at room temperature for about 45 minutes to an hour. It just makes it easier when we're making our dough that it incorporates the flour that much easier, okay? Now you can do this straight on a bench. We've obviously got a cloth here, so I'm choosing a bowl today. But you can do it straight on a bench and you make a well and you just bring it in, gradually folding in the flour and the eggs into the same mix. Okay, same process. So, I'll make a well in this. Okay. One egg. Two egg. Okay, add all the ingredients and my oil. and my water. I'll keep the water up there because if we find that the mix is a tad dry we might need to add a little bit more water. Okay? So I'm just using them three or four fingers and I just, just break the eggs up. I'm just going in a circular motion. And I'm just incorporating So the flour you just Slowly mixing we're those slowly bring it in. Yeah. Okay, we're trying to make a nice soft dough. So we don't want to beat it with our hand or don't beat it. Or you, you could do it on a machine on a slow speed with a dough hook, that'd be fine. Um, you can actually make it in a robo coop and it doesn't make a bad product because right, it makes it quite quick so your handling of the of the of the flour um, is reduced. So there's lots of ways to do it. But I'm assuming that people might not have equipment, so therefore this will be the best option. So now you can see that the liquid is starting to absorb some flour. Now again, your recipe says two eggs. It doesn't say what size eggs, okay? So that could be the difference in needing extra little bit of water or not, okay? I think we use 50 gram eggs here in North Metro. Okay, so I can feel that now starting to come together. I can feel that I'll, I should have enough moisture in here, liquid. Now at this point, you could add um, coloring in there. So you could add some squid in color if you want it. You could add a tomato paste to get a little bit of color, or powders, dried powders. You can get tomato powders, spinach powders. Um, so you could add them in there. You get a nice bit of color if you wanted to do some colored pasta. Okay? And this is the point of, that you would do that.
So I'm getting the, working the gluten. I think I might need a tad water. Flour is different, Cormac. You know, sometimes you have flour that's harvested or processed at different times of the year. So that's sometimes right. it can be quite a different product. Every time you, you use flour from a different bag, it's almost going to be different. That's a brilliant point. You've got to remember, food is, like there are recipes, um, but they're ever changing. And it's about understanding touch and feel and how to treat the product. And that's all comes with experience. Baking is a bit different because it's a science, but with savoury cooking, um, you can always adapt. And um, well, it's just the understanding of the feel of the product. And that's now pretty much taken all the mix from the bowl. So I'm just going to now transfer it to my board. So I'm just going to get all that from my fingers. So it's good to do it by hand. I mean, if you're cooking at home, by hand is always good because you get to feel the product. You get, you get, you know, to get understanding, isn't understand it? it. Now, in a commercial situation, it's different. If you went into a cafe and you're working for Chef Brad and he tells you to go and make a kilo of pasta and you start doing this, well, he's not going to be happy because it's going to take about an hour. So that's when you'd use your equipment and your commercial production. Then that's coming together really nice. I can feel that just coming together nice and soft. Just work it, getting all the elastins, getting the gluten moving. So obviously, working this on a clean surface. On a clean surface. Really, really important. It's just on a straight on a stainless steel bench or on your bench at home is fine. Just make sure it's clean, and you're just working it. Okay. And that's just about there now. All right. So you can see that's a nice. Smooth, soft, not too hard dough. Okay, so I'm gonna pop that in there. I'm gonna wrap it with glad wrap. I'm gonna pop that in the fridge. Okay, and that's gonna rest for at least half an hour. Okay, that lets all the glutens just relax and to get the nice dough then ready for us to roll and make our noodles. Okay, so I put my pasta to rest here. I had it in the fridge for a few minutes. I've taken it out so we can rest on the bench. Just gotta keep it covered so that it um, doesn't skin, put that skin on it, okay? So if it's at room temperature, make it much easier for us to roll it out, all right? Now, hollandaise sauce. I was listening on the radio last week and people were phoning in with their secret recipe tips and so on for hollandaise sauce. Again, it's a worldwide known sauce um, and you know hundreds of, if not thousands of varieties. So there's no right way and wrong way, okay? So we're just gonna make a recipe. Um, this recipe works, so we're gonna go with it. Um, we're using minced beef today. Some people might use veal, they might use half pork and half meat, no, excuse me, beef, and that's entirely up to you, okay? So the traditional bolognese sauce, um, so I've got heat my olive oil again in the pan, and I've got my, my mince. Now when you're putting your mince in, don't just put it in in one big lump, because the proteins in the meat is just gonna do that straight away, and you're gonna be chopping away. So just with your fingers, just, so you can hear the sizzle? Alright, so we're trying to get a bit of colour on it, okay? And just break it up to hand. When you get a set, Cormac, can you just tilt that up for me? No, I don't care. You have a look in there when you've got that full. Alright, so you can see that now? Yeah. We've got the full happening, so I'm going to get that nice seal on it, okay? Get it all in as quick as you can. Just breaking it up, the fingers, so it doesn't have big clumps of meat in the in the pot. Okay, I've 
off. So you're just sealing that meat in there, right? Sealing it. Now, with mince, it's not like a steak where it's got a flat surface where you can get a good seal on it. Um, because of the process where the meat has been minced, very often, and you can see it there, you'll see moisture starting to come out, okay? Um, so you don't really get that much of a seal on it, okay? Because the fat really starts to melt quicker, okay? Because you got in there, you, because it's minced, you've got some fat. That's probably about a, I'd say an 85, 90% chemically lean mince, all right? So you've got that percent of your fat in there that will, because it's minced, then it will start to melt before you get a good seal on the meat. But it is, it is actually sealing, and it gives that a nice little cook sort of, caramelized meat sort of flavor to it, okay? As opposed to just putting it in and adding sauce to it and making it like a boil. My vegetables. Okay, so I've got my onion, finely diced with some garlic. Okay, we'll add that in. Alright, now for this recipe, we've got some bromois or finely diced carrot, celery, and leek. Some recipes will just have carrot and celery, some might have. Um, just onion, and um, that's completely up to yourself. But traditionally, I believe it's got celery and carrot and leaf, okay? So they're cut, not too big, nice and small. Again, you'll be told, lots of people tell you that's not a lot of nail, other people tell you that it is, so it's, it's a personal dish. Okay, it's just starting to sort of come together nicely there. Now I'm just gonna add a tiny the smallest bit of flour. It's just gonna it's just gonna tighten that, bring all that those juices together. Okay. Might get you to when you've got that together, yep. Cormac, just show us that one. We'll have a we have a bit so of a look in there. Look at that now. So you saw I did have some juices there a minute ago, now it's all quite dry. So I'm not making a roux as such, and um, I'm just sort of bringing it, binding it together, okay? Yep. Alright, so you can see there quite a good even distribution of veg to me. Okay? Yep. You could increase that to your personal taste, okay? Now at this stage, I will add my red wine. Now as always when cooking with alcohol, we must burn off the alcohol or cook it out, okay? You should never taste a sauce or a, a dish and taste alcohol. You should never taste it. It's an underlying flavor as opposed to a taste, okay? So make sure you cook that off. So again, you can see that liquid in there a minute from the way it was a moment ago. So I'll just cook that down for a moment until that wine has evaporated. So if they were doing this at home, they'd do what you were doing, make the pasta, let the pasta rest. While the pasta is resting, get the bolognese. So, workflow plan, we do it all the time. So now that you're at home, it makes no difference. The same principles apply. So make a little, it can be a little note down side of your board where you're working or whatever way you want to do it. You don't have to type it out, just a few little notes of steps. So the first step was make it way out from my pasta and make my dough, let it rest. The second is prepare my vegetables for my sauce and put my sauce on. The next step will be to roll out my pasta and, and, and cut it into the noodles, okay? By that stage, we'll have this sauce ready and we can go to the next point, all right? So it's the same thing, workflow plan and recipes, okay? They're the two documents that you will use all the time. Workflow plan and standard recipe. They're the two documents as a chef that you will always be able, if you have both of them, you can just adapt whether it's one portion or a hundred portions, okay? All right, so that's nice and dry now. I'm going to add my tomato paste. Now with tomato paste, you've got to be careful that you actually give that a bit of a cook out also, so we can leave it a bit thinner sometimes, okay? Okay, so it's 
that's cooking. And I've got herbs here. I've got oregano and I've got basil. I'm going to leave them in the very end. We just add them in as a fresh, give it freshness for sauce after it's cooked. I could put them in now and cook them through, but I don't want to do that. I want to add them at the end. Okay? Now you've got to be careful. Because we've added flour, it's got, it's got a tendency to stick because the flour will want to go to the bottom of the pan. We keep moving it. All right, and having it on low heat. So have a look there now, that's starting to take shape. Okay? Now I'm gonna add my stock to it. And that flour will absorb that stock now. That should give us the consistency that we're after. Now this sauce is gonna simmer for about an hour. Some people will go an hour and a half, some people go as far as two hours, okay? Again, that depends on yourself, depends on what, uh, you know, what result you're after, okay? And when I'm making this myself at home for myself, I would get a cacciatore sausage and I'm, when, it's, when it's dry and hard and grated. And I would grate that into it and I will just give it a real um, Italian flavor through it. Okay? Now, tomato con cast, that's straight out of a tin, no problem. All right. All right, so just have a look there. So that's where I have a little bit of stock left, I'm going to keep that. Because as that cooks down over an hour, it will slowly reduce and we might need to just, just add a little bit more stock to it. Okay, so I'm going to put that on the side, let it simmer, and then we come back to our noodles. So our sauce is simmering away, our dough has rested. Okay, so we've taken our dough, and um, I've just taken half of it to make it more manageable for rolling out. Okay, so if you have a pasta roller that you clip onto the side of the bench, brilliant. Now a lot of people do these days. Uh, but you may not. So we just show it this way, all right? So we've made it by hand and we roll it by hand, okay? You can't beat it. So get it a bit of a shape like that. Now I'm going to use here super fine semolina. Don't use flour, okay? For the grains of the semolina just really make it that much nicer, okay? So you just roll it. I'm trying to keep a bit of a shape on it. Now again, depending on how thick you want it really, you can go really thin, you can have it quite thick, but uh, you know, we want to go a fair, fair thinness on it. Now if you're using a roller machine, the way you do it is you feed it in, and you just change one setting, roll it through, take it back, next setting, roll it through, next setting, roll it through. And that way you just get a gradual, a gradual um, thinness. So that's just to help it so it doesn't stick right. Just doesn't stick, that's right. The flour, if you use flour, it gets all gluey with that's that exactly moisture right. in there. Yeah, it gets gluey and gooey. You can use it, we don't have assembly and you can use flour, that's fine. And um, assembly and just you can feel the grain on it. It's yeah. And you could fold that over and then roll it again to get it really finer, but I, I think for what we're doing, I think this is fine. Actually going quite well with the rolling pin. Yeah, well, like I say, again, having your eggs at room temperature helps make the dough and keep it all soft. So when you pull that dough out of the fridge, you want to let it come to room temp a little bit. Yeah, I'll just put it in the fridge for a second, just to relax the gluten's in it, and then I've left it. That's that's the other half what I made. That's just sitting there, lovely. Okay. Now again, it's a pretty rough, rustic sort of a dish, so. You don't have that perfect shape. We'll just try and keep it in some form. So that's nearly there now. I think I might just give it. We can almost see your hand through it, which is well, always right. a tip for me that your pasta yeah, is nearly ready. Yeah, that's it. You can go to, if you go too thin on it, sometimes when it hits the water, it, it only takes a minute anyway, two or three, maybe two minutes a minute maximum, in and out. You want to keep that al dente in it as well. Okay? Right, so 
So that's about right now. So I'm going to just, now what I said with the sauce, just keep, it's just coming along absolutely lovely now. You can see that it's thickened up, okay? So that's been on now for an hour, just a little bit over. Um, so that's very nearly ready. Gotcha. I've got my boiling salted water on. Always make sure you, it's got salt in it, okay? I'm just gonna take that out a fraction more. Beautiful. Now, I'm gonna take my semolina again. And I'm just gonna fold it. I'm not gonna roll it, because it could be a tendency for it to stick. You don't want that, all right? All right, now, with pasta, you've got spaghetti, which is round extrusion. And then you've got angel hair pasta, which is flat, but about the same size. And then it goes up into fettuccine, tagliatelle, and pappardelle. They're all similar, they're all the same, same dough, just different sizes, okay? So if I was to go really fine like that, we could be calling it angel hair, then fettuccine, then tagliatelle, and then pappardelle, okay, or pappardelle. So in this instance, we're just gonna go about fettuccine size. All right, so that's just, That. All right. That's what we're after. All right. So the, I think the key comment is when they're cutting it, don't press down. Let the knife just that's right. Don't, cut through. Yes, don't let your, your if you're right-handed, don't let your left hand press onto that. Yeah. So that's right. So just do one at a time. So you know it's. Pretty, um, pretty satisfying to, uh, to do it something like this by hand. Um, the other thing you can do is just set up a little stand where you, like a right. pasta stand, if you wanted, to, if where you, you were getting into your pasta yeah. at home. That's right. Or you can just dry. Just get what you can do is just get a broom handle, put it across two tables, and you can just put it across, and it will dry out nicely for you. So again, Chinese egg noodles, very similar, they might just have a little bit more egg in it, or even an egg yolk. But the principle is all the same. So once you get this technique and this method, and a recipe that you're, 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 you're familiar with and you're comfortable with, sure it's endless. You can make you know, raviolis, tortellinis. So it's the same dough, isn't it? It's the same dough. As I said, you want to colour it, you colour it. And now you can also do a, a sort of a the stage before that. You could have put some nice herbs in it like leaves, fold it over and then roll it. And then you'll, so if you want to do a feta like, and a ravioli, you can have a nice hair um, sitting underneath it. And that's also quite effective if you're going to do some chefy type dishes. All right, so you can see this now. I'm very happy with this texture. It works really well. The sauce has had a good hour, hour and a bit, just to cook out and get all of those flavors going through. That's just beautiful. So you would only, you would literally, or what you're gonna, you're literally gonna cook it and then serve it. It wouldn't be something that you'd leave on the bench for okay. an hour. Okay, so if you wanted, again, a restaurant situation, mise en place, you could just work out a portion, you could put them on a wire rack, just you know, let's, say, let's say that's a portion, and just leave it like that, and it'll sort of dry out a bit. And then you, could, you can also freeze it, and cook it from frozen, but you'd more or less, you'd, usually you'd do that in a, in a ravioli type, type situation. But the best way for this, you know, you make it at home, easy peasy, into the water, and it's all good to go, okay? So my water is boiling, my sauce is ready. So I'm really ready to put this together. So really nicely salted boiling nice water. Salted water. I don't throw any water, I'm just trying as best you can. Not necessarily strand by strand, but just like that. You're not just chucking handfuls of it, I can Absolutely say. Absolutely not, it will clump up on you. And uh, you don't want that. Right. Now just to use a tongs at this stage, probably heat them a little bit. And just just to lose any bits that might be stuck together. Okay. That'll take about a minute, maybe not much more than that. We've got a collar there. Now one thing you never do with pasta is refresh it underwater. Okay, it's a, it's a bit of an urban myth for some reason, I don't know why people do it. But when you're washing all the starch off, you want to keep the starch on it. 
because that's what the sauce sticks to when you put it in the bowl. Otherwise, the sauce just runs off and it's a slimy mess. Okay. So never refresh it. If you're gonna if you're gonna keep it for later, you let it cool and you put some olive oil on it and just give it a very light coating of olive oil. That way, it won't stick on you. Okay. Again, al dente. It's a term you're gonna hear all the time. Uh, we want to have this with a little bit of bite in it. Okay. Now the Italians will have it quite al dente. Here in Australia, we're not really accustomed to it. We like it a little bit softer. Okay, I'm happy with that. Okay, so if this was mise en place, we would just get into that, let it cool off a wee bit. Okay, get the water out of it, make sure there's no water on it. Okay, then you would get some olive oil, like that. And just with your fingers, nice and lightly, just mix it around and then that will be on place. Now when that goes cold, then you could pre-portion it, or you could do whatever it is you want to do, okay? Now in this instance, we're going to go pretty much ready to go straight away. So I'm just going to heat my bowl up. Okay, so I'm just going to season that a wee bit. I'm going to check my sauce, make sure it's where we're at. Bang on. Now, I'm going to take my hairs we spoke about earlier. So my basil. Oops. And my oregano. Okay. I'm going to roll that up the way we did with our other dishes. So you get that lovely freshness from the basil on that from the oregano, as opposed to cooking it out in it. Okay. Now I like to leave it quite big, not too fine. Keep a little bit back to go on top. Right. So what I'll do. You could put this pass on the plate and then have the sauce over the top, but this is a nice way of mixing it all together. Okay. Okay, well you see the way that the starch and the pasta is grabbing the sauce straight away. It's not running off it. Okay? You can always tell when the pasta's been cooked and then washed off because like you said you can that sauce is holding on that right. pasta and you just get that saucy lump. Okay. You can see yeah, second uh, fresh herb. second lunch nice. coming up. Parmesan, a wee bit of EVO. Imagine some crunchy bread on the side of the Oh that'd be right. perfect, yeah. Okay, that is our what we'll call it. We'll call it tagliatelle, I would say, for the size of it. Uh, bolognese. Thanks, guys.